If you want to hear about the secret murder plot hidden within the world of Luxy, stick around to the end of this video. If you yourself cannot release, then it will come to take a piece. What is it talking about? I'm not holding on to anything. It couldn't be talking about releasing these 58 things you missed from Crypt TV's hit web series Looksy, could it? Okay, fine. I was gonna keep them to myself, but here they are. 58 things you missed. Before we get started, you'll definitely want to have seen the Crypt TV web series Looksy. So if you haven't gotten to see it yet, click or tap right here to watch it before coming back to this video. One of the things that's never fully answered in Looksy is what the extent of the titular character's supernatural powers actually is. In other words, how is Luxie able to use its abilities to punish its victims? Starting in episode 1, it looks at first glance like Luxie has the ability to teleport or at least move extremely fast to catch people who aren't able to release. For example, at the very beginning, this woman runs into the bathroom as if she's already been chased, then checks all three stalls to confirm she's alone. She must do this because she already has an idea of what Luxie is capable of and wants to make sure she's alone by checking every inch of the bathroom she's hiding out in. Eventually, she decides to hide in the middle stall. Now focus on this crack in the door. Did you catch that? The creature crosses from left to right. The only door in and out of the bathroom is on the far right side. So how did it get to the left side so quickly? On top of that, the shoes end up appearing under the stall back over on the left side. The constant movement puts the viewers on edge. By breaking the rules of space, we're never sure where the looksy might appear. There's another example of its uncanny movement ability at the end when it appears in the toilet seat behind her. In episode 2, it warps out of Daniel's bedroom, then warps in and out of the shower area to kill the woman Daniel's having an affair with. Then in episode 3, it shows up behind a bedroom door. How is it able to do this? Is it teleportation? Episode 5 offers a couple of possibilities to solving this secret. First, we see the creature double itself. Daniel shows up at the hospital, but soon sees that he's also a victim of Luxy. When he grabs her knee, pause it right there. It's Luxy's hand with Daniel's arm. I would infer that whenever we see someone who's died come back to life, Luxy is behind it. But Luxy also seems to possess the ability to duplicate itself. Because right here, dead Daniel and Luxy appear side by side. You can pause it to where they're on screen at the same time. There could be multiple copies of Luxy helping create the illusion of teleportation, but that doesn't explain how Luxy appears in rooms that the characters have already proven to be empty. Episode 5 may offer an answer for that as well. The protagonist has an opportunity to attack Luxie, but despite having no eyes, its extremely fast reflexes and movement speed help it get away. My theory is that Luxie has the ability to move so fast that if you let it out of sight for a moment, it can rush to another location. And it can do this all very quickly and quietly. That's not the only ability it has though. It's super flexible, enough to bend down so its head is down by its feet. It's strong enough to rip off body parts and contort corpses, and it can open and close doors without touching them. Honestly, it seems like it can do whatever it wants and tends to just toy with its victims. I wouldn't be surprised if we haven't seen the full extent of what it's capable of yet. Despite all of this, it does seem fairly easy to hurt Luxie. It gets injured when its hand gets slammed in the door in episode 2 and when she stabs it in the head in episode 5. It doesn't stay down for long though, later tossing the bloody fork back to mock her. Now that we've covered what the monster can do, let's take a look at why. Each character receives the same note. If you yourself cannot release, then it will come to take a piece. Let's break it down episode by episode. The first woman won't release herself from a marriage that's clearly gone south. If you've ever heard the term, take her hand in marriage, you'll know why it's symbolic that her hand was taken from her. And similarly, if you've ever heard the term, she walked out on her husband, that could also be the reason her legs are broken. She's one of only two characters to survive an encounter, so it's possible that Luxie is actually giving her a second chance, so that once her legs do heal, she'll appreciate them enough to put them to good use and walk out on her man. Another episode shows her writing tons of notes for other victims, which makes me think that there's a Jigsaw-esque apprenticeship going on here. Like, if you survive your game, you'll become a stronger person for it and help set up games for someone else. In fact, the themes in this series aren't too dissimilar from those in the Saw franchise. In the next episode, we see why she needs to leave her marriage, because her husband is seeing another woman. The adulterous woman wants more than to simply sleep with Daniel, though. She's got her eyes set on being the replacement. 
She wants to be the girl whose face appears next to him in that photo, which is why Luxie takes away her head. She needed to release her idea of being with a married man. There's evidence around the house that this is the home of a man in a committed relationship. The obvious one is the picture on the bathroom mirror, but she also steps outside briefly where you can see two heart-shaped chairs. In the bathroom, a double shower head is installed, one for the taller man and one for his wife. There's more backstory on why Daniel cheats on his wife later in the series. But for now, let's move on to episode 3. The character in this one needs to release his obsession with his deceased daughter who drowned in an accident. His release would be to move on with his life. We see him in a sad state, preparing his daughter's would-be 13th birthday cake and eating it by himself while flipping through an album of old photos. This isn't just a one-time thing for his daughter's birthday. He still has cupboards locked up, something that you would do to prevent a child from getting in, and seemingly he hasn't touched the daughter's room. He wants nothing more than to embrace his child again, so Luxie removes his arms while leaving his hands and twists his head around to signify that he needed to turn around and stop looking to the past. Episode 4 is where things really get interesting. It opens with the death of a high school student at Harbor High. Shortly thereafter, we discover that there are already 12 victims being investigated and this kid is the 13th. Pausing the video to read the small text uncovers the reason for the deaths. Medication found poisoned, laced over the counter. This is the biggest event that's happened so far in the series. This headline confirms a mass murder plot, and all signs point to it being someone other than Luxy. There's even a possibility that it goes much bigger than what's shown on screen. If medication was laced at a pharmacy, there are probably other adult victims that we haven't seen yet. This community has a mass murderer on its hands. It's no wonder Luxy is drawn to this area, because there must be countless people who need to release. This is actually where the whole saga begins. The series presents the episodes in an order that lets us discover more about the monster with each passing episode. But Crypt TV later released a special supercut with the episodes arranged in chronological order. It starts with this funeral episode, which tells us a lot about why there's so much grief in this community. The reason that Luxie comes here and pushes these people to release. It is here that we see the beginnings of Daniel and his wife's relationship falling apart. I would assume that they're at the funeral because one of the 13 children who were poisoned was theirs, and losing their child puts a huge strain on their relationship. It's here that Daniel meets the woman who he later has the affair with. Often in times of crisis, it's comforting to turn to someone you can relate to, and unfortunately in this case, they develop a relationship. Daniel's wife finds out, and that leads to the next episode chronologically, where Luxie forces her to release in the bathroom. Not long after, we have the infidelity episode, and my theory is it's both Daniel and the affair woman who are punished in this one. When she gets out of the bathroom, Daniel's nowhere to be found, because Luxie has already taken him, removing his eyes because it was his wandering eyes that initially led him to check out this woman. And by the way, it may not have been the first time that his eyes were up to no good. Later that night, the wife wakes up in the hospital and tries to kill Luxy, but she's unsuccessful. It's unclear how much time passes until the final episode in the chronology where Luxy returns to punish the lingering father, at the end of which Daniel's wife has become Luxy's note writing lackey. So if she's been the one writing the notes, then who wrote her note on the bathroom stall door? That's also answered in episode 4. The short answer is, it's this guy. But let's take it back to the start of episode 4. The kid who dies in the opening shot is featured on the memorial, where we see this photo of him. I'm assuming that's his sister. Her name is Gretchen Holt. Turns out she's a cop, and she's tasked with cleaning up the evidence markers. Her release is going to involve moving on after the tragedy, just like the guy from the third episode. But in her case, she wants to do a little bit of investigation on her own, and starts to snoop around the school when something out of the ordinary happens, and she sees one of the kids who was covered in the sheets back up and moving around. As we know, this is a manipulation of Luxy. After coming face to f well, after an encounter with Luxie, we finally meet the mystery man, and he actually saves her, but ends up getting picked off by the creature. Gretchen actually survives, but this man is forced to leave the message in the bathroom before eventually killing himself at the start of episode 5. We don't know a whole lot about his character, so all I can do is theorize about what he needed to release. His death may not be the best place to look for clues like I did with the others, because it would appear that he committed suicide to escape the torment of Luxy, so he got out on his own terms. All we know was he was in the school that night after the murders, sneaking around backstage. You may not have noticed this in the background, but when Holt surveys with her flashlight, you can spot a girl facing the wall. My first inclination is that the mystery man is doing something to her when he notices Holt and kicks her out. He also makes a brief appearance at the funeral, looking down on the crowd from above before making his exit. At this point, he's looking like the top suspect to be the murderer. 
My guess is he has some kind of grudge against society, and his release would simply be to let go. What he ends up doing instead is killing dozens of people, showing up to the funeral to watch the parents suffer, then returning to the scene of the crime for some more foul play. He knows Luxie's gonna do something horrible to him, so he ends his life on his own terms to get away. That's the last death we see on screen, because the married woman ends up getting away at the end of episode 5. But that doesn't mean that the fifth episode doesn't still offer some clues about Luxie. There are elements that keep popping up for each victim. For example, the victims always seem to be around flowers when Luxie attacks. They can be seen beside the hospital bed, the flower wallpaper in episode 3, also flowers on the cups, on the jars, on the toilet in episode 2, and again on the wallpaper in episode 1. The wallpaper design resembles the cracks on the walls in episode 4, and the newspaper article in that episode encourages people to bring flowers. Back in the first episode, a butterfly design is seen on Luxie's shoes, so Luxie could represent a butterfly going around from flower to flower, or victim to victim, spreading its message. There are some other similarities in the attacks, but the meanings, if any, may not be as clear. For example, I saw an apple and banana on the scene of two of the attacks, and two of them take place around 6 o'clock. That could have something to do with the stopwatch, which comes in the shape of an eye, one feature that Luxie noticeably does not have. The stopwatch could be a countdown for how long someone has to release before they're punished, but those details are yet to be seen. One conclusion I would like to make, however, is that the body parts that Luxie collects from the people make up the composition of Luxie. Looking at its design, Luxie does seem to be stitched together from a bunch of various body parts, and we see the main character's own hand used to give her the stopwatch near the end. As I mentioned, Luxie is prominently lacking eyes considering its name is a portmanteau of the words look and see, the two verbs most commonly associated with eyes. It will be interesting to see what Luxie ends up doing with Daniel's eyes. That brings me to my last thing you missed, which is this title card asking about what will happen next. That may be the end of season 1, but it appears that there are more plans to bring Luxie back for a second season. You don't want to miss out on what happens next, so I'll leave you this link to subscribe to Crypt TV to stay up to date on Luxie and plenty of other great short horror content. Let me know some of your own theories about Luxie and where you think the series will go from here in the comments. I will see you in the next one. Assuming we both survive.